So the other night I checked out my notifications on YouTube and noticed somebody said, hello, Cog sent me here. And then I realized my sub count was going up at a greater rate. So before I begin, I would like to say thank you Cognitive Thought for the awesome shout out. It was a wonderful surprise and I greatly appreciate it. Okay, now let's get on to the actual video. We are revisiting David Reeves in his series, Why You Should Believe in Creation and Not Evolution. Today's topic, Carbon Dating. Why should you believe in creation and not evolution? I mean, scientifically speaking. Haven't we proven that evolution is a fact? Okay, that's just the intro. Let's get to the meat. For there to be any hope that evolution happened, our Earth must be millions and billions of years old. And it is. The Earth is 4.54 billion years old. You have any objections to that? And also not to mention, evolution is simply change over time. Life changes over time. And if we found out the next day that the Earth was like, I don't know, a few thousand years old, evolution would still be true. Because evolution can happen in a short period of time. It's only when we're given a long period of time does evolution produce anything interesting like speciation. You're mixing up the term evolution and you're using it incorrectly. A shorter period of time does not mean evolution does not happen. It's just that the more time we have, the more evolution occurs. This is analogous to hair growth. Do we need multiple years just to acknowledge that hair growth happens? No, of course not. Your hair grows no matter what the time frame is because it's a process that continuously happens. Exactly the same idea with evolution. Now you could say that the evolution of something, or an evolutionary history we studied, may not be true if the Earth were younger, but that's more of natural history and specific pathways of evolution rather than evolution itself. Get your terminology right. After all, without millions of years, there's no way that an amoeba, or a frog, or a fish had time to evolve into a man. Right, except that amoebas and frogs are modern organisms. Please, stop using these to refer to prehistoric organisms in the past. Say something like single-celled, or prokaryotic organisms. Now many people mistakenly appeal to carbon-14, or C-14 dating, to support the supposed old ages that evolution requires. By old age, I can only assume you mean past 6,000 years old, since you're a young Earth creationist. And we only use carbon dating for certain things that are relatively young. We don't use it to date fossils that are millions of years old. And I haven't heard anyone claim to do so. You're essentially attacking a straw man here. But C-14 dating isn't actually used to date things that are thought to be millions of years old. That's because C-14 doesn't last very long. It decays away quite rapidly. It most certainly does. Wow, David, you said two things right in a row in this video. That's impressive. Even though you're attacking non-existent people who think carbon dating is used for dating millions of years. Yep, even if you're not attacking anyone real, it's still impressive. If our whole Earth were made of nothing but C-14 atoms, after just one million years, there would be nothing left. First of all, that doesn't work since carbon-14 is constantly being created in the atmosphere. Second of all, assuming that the process I mentioned just now just suddenly stopped, a million years? That feels like such an arbitrary number. Where did you get that? Honestly feels way too long. I'd give an estimation somewhere between 100,000 years to 300,000 years just to be safe. Now that's just an estimation, but it mostly certainly can't be 1 million years. And also, why do you have to give that analogy? Is your audience stupid or something? Just say the half-life is 5,730 years. People understand that. Okay, so no evolutionary scientist expects to find C-14 in a fossil that they believe is millions of years old. This is a good time for me to stop and explain how carbon dating works for anyone who doesn't know already, since it'll be helpful for the rest of the video and also may satiate some of your curiosity. If you already know how it works and you want to skip the explanation, feel free to click this annotation to skip ahead. So the first thing to know is the creation of carbon-14 in the atmosphere. In the lower stratosphere, in the upper troposphere, cosmic rays produce energized neutrons. These neutrons then collide with regular nitrogen atoms, which produce carbon-14 after kicking out a proton. This process is about equal to the rate in which carbon-14 decays back to nitrogen, so we can assume that the atmospheric carbon-14 concentration is about the same. This is important since it marks the essential starting point in which we compare the sample to. Continuing on, the carbon-14 combines with oxygen to form carbon dioxide, and then it gets incorporated into plants and ultimately ultimately sugars via photosynthesis. Animals eat the products produced by plants, and that animal is eaten by another, and then another. So now you can see how the carbon-14 enters this biological system. When an organism is alive, there's a constant exchange in carbon that keeps the ratio of carbon-14 to carbon-12 inside the organism constant. However, once the organism dies, this exchange stops. Carbon-14 will constantly undergo beta-minus decay, meaning a neutron converts into a proton and the carbon emits an electron in an antineutrino. This overall effect is that the proton number will decrease by 1, while the overall 
overall atomic mass remains the same, so the carbon-14 will return to a nitrogen atom, not to a carbon-12 atom. Please don't get that confused. So now we take that sample and we count the number of C14 atoms. Recently, we are doing this with an accelerator mass spectrometer. I won't go into detail on how this spectrometer works, you'll just have to take organic chemistry in college. Or do a Google search, I guess. After obtaining a number, we plug it into this equation. N is the current number of C14 atoms, and 0 is the starting C14 amount. E is, you know, E. Lambda is the constant in which case for C14 it is 8267, and T is time. Now you've probably seen a lot of variations of this equation, and those are fine too. Anyway, we just plug and chug and eventually get the values of the variable we want, T. And that concludes our brief explanation of carbon dating. Something to share over the dinner table tonight. So now let's get back on track with the video. Carbon-14 can be detected using an incredibly accurate and high-tech machine called an accelerator mass spectrometer. Looks like the creationist did a bit of research. Gotta give credit where credit is due. Now these machines have to be checked occasionally to make sure that they're not picking up any background contamination from the laboratory. The contamination is more likely to be from the sample itself. That's why we have to prepare the sample by undergoing multiple procedures. For example, it must be treated with many rounds of acids and bases in order to eliminate unwanted factors such as other acids and dissolved carbon dioxide. It's less of the checking of the machine that eliminates contamination. Sure, the machine has to be checked once in a while, but so do all machinery in labs. Rock samples that supposedly contain zero C14, like fossils and coal and limestone, are used for the test. Well, not exactly. If a scientist suspects the age of a rock or a fossil to be greater than 50,000 years old, then carbon dating will not be used, because carbon dating can only accurately measure up to about that age. Any older and the C14 in the sample is too low in quantity to detect. The problem? Labs began realizing that the test samples had measurable amounts of C14 in it. I'm gonna need a source on that because that's flaring up my bullshit detector, which by the way hasn't stopped since the start of this video. So the scientists concluded that the samples all must have been contaminated somehow, even if they had thoroughly been prepared for the test to ensure no contamination. <laughs> Are you talking about a specific incident or every fossil we've dated? Because David, you're not being very specific here. It's time to stop. It's time to stop spreading lies and it's time to get a new hobby. Interestingly enough, a blank sample measured zero C14, so it wasn't a machine error. Well, that's only for calibration. It eliminates any calibration errors, but there still could be a number of other errors by the machine. I'm not saying that there was another error, I still think this story is bullshit. The conclusion that these scientists refused to consider was that the rocks and fossil samples that they were testing were not millions of years old. And yet, how else do you explain C14 in supposedly old rocks and fossils? I'm not going to respond to this part until you give me a source of your claim, so skip. Diamonds are considered by secular geologists to be billions of years old. They're the hardest natural substance and so they resist contamination. Okay, let's assume what you said is true, that we found traces amount of C14 in diamonds. Okay, there are a string of things I would like to point out. First of all, there are many ways to contaminate samples. For example, the decay of other radioactive isotopes, such as uranium, can cause a cluster decay and ultimately create carbon-14 from carbon-12 sources. Of course, why do we say contamination now and not when we accurately date other younger things? Good question, but to understand this, you'll have to think critically from a scientific point of view. Allow me to explain. When an item is over 50,000 years old, we can't accurately detect any carbon-14 within the Sample. But what happens when you actually try to do so? Well, no matter the age of whatever item we're measuring, we will always get at least some small amounts of carbon-14. Why? Because of contamination. Contamination usually adds very, very little amounts of carbon-14. When we date something within the acceptable age range, this tiny amount usually does not matter. It won't affect the results enough to escape the error range. However, anything older than 50,000 years old will always have some C14 due to this contamination. We are aware of it, so we know we cannot count this detected C14. Did that make sense to everyone? Diamonds are formed over 100 miles below the surface. Not always. Diamonds can form as shallow as 87 miles and are brought up extremely quickly by pipes. You mean brought up by volcanic eruptions, right? It's nearly impossible that diamonds could be contaminated by any foreign C14, and there shouldn't be any intrinsic to the diamonds if they're billions of years old. Well, they are contaminated to some degree, along with everything else we date. This is a huge problem for secular geologists who believe dates of billions of years. <sighs> David, just think about it for one second, please. What do we gain by saying diamonds are billions of years old? If what you said is true and that diamonds are only thousands of years old, we would just say that. There's no reason to hide it and say that they're billions of years old. It's not like our knowledge of evolution pathways are affected by mere diamonds. What do we have to gain by lying? Unless, unless we're not lying. They're 
believing in a theory, despite science in the lab giving conflicting data. Or maybe it's because you don't understand science. When we start with God's word, these findings make perfect sense. Yup, because disproving one side automatically proves the other, right? According to the biblical record, the earth is only a few thousand years old. Oh no, no 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 no, I'm not venturing into that. The Bible, man, that's a fucking scary book. Fuck that. I'm ending the video before, you know, this gets too crazy. And besides, I'm completely worn out. It takes a lot of mental discipline to argue with creationists. So thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video, which will actually be a short one about video requests. Stay tuned. Bye.